Okay, so in part four, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start adding JavaScript so that we're able to load our image into our app. Before you uh, start this tutorial, you should read about Cayman.js and also learn about APIs because we're going to be using APIs in Cayman.js in um, parts five through nine. Um, I'll go over what those are when we get to part five, but you should go ahead and read those. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually make sure we're, we have our text editor open and then we're going to open our script.js file because we're going to be writing all of our JavaScript inside this file. It should be blank, but we did link it already in our index file up here. The first thing that we'll do is we're going to make it so that none of our JavaScript will run before the page is uh, loaded and ready to go. So we're going to do this by adding an event listener for the document. The document is actually the HTML document, so our entire website. So for this document, we're going to add an event listener that is listening for when all of the DOM content is loaded, and that means when all of the document um, content is loaded. And all of the JavaScript that we write in the remainder of the project is going to go inside of this function, attach this event listener. So to get started, we can say document.addEventListener, oops, the event is DOM content loaded, capitalization is important. We're going to call a function. We need our curly bracket, hit enter. So then we have the closing curly, closing um, parentheses, but after the closing curly, you want to put comma, false, and then a semicolon. All of the JavaScript that we write is going to be inside of this function that will be called after the DOM content is loaded. So this is just means that none of the other JavaScript functions will run until everything is loaded and ready to go. Um, so now that we have that done, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the code to actually be able to load the image into our app. So you should have your app open in a browser. If you don't remember how to do that, you want to go to your project folder and you want to double click on your index file. And we're ready to go. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a variable that is named load image and it's going to get the HTML element with the ID of load, which is our input that's going to load our file. So if we go back to our HTML, we can see uh, right here we have our input type file that's going to be our file picker that's here and it has an ID of load. So this line of code, this variable, is just going to save us time so that we don't have to keep writing document .get element by ID um, load every time we want to use this HTML element. So inside of this function, I'm going to say var load image where the I is capitalized equals document .get element by ID. The ID is load. And then I'm going to say semicolon. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to write a function that will be called to actually load our image that we pick from into our app. So remember that whenever we're going to set up a function, um, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can say var and then the function name equals function. Or we can say function and then the function name with any parameters and then our um, curly brackets. So we're going to create a function that's named load input handler and it's just handling um, the input that we're loading into our project. So function load input handler. We are going to give this function a parameter, the event parameter. We need our curly brackets, hit enter so you get some space. And then we're going to write all the actions that define load input handler inside these two curly brackets. You should have a semicolon after that closing curly bracket. Make sure that you're tabbed in so it's easier to read. So the next thing that we'll do is we're actually going to define another uh, variable named image file. And that's going to get the uh, 
the link to the image that we're using so that we can um, update the source of the image URL. So if we go back to our image tag in our HTML, um, we temporarily put the source src equals as puppy.jpg so we can see what it looks like. But we want this source to update to whatever we pick from, and that's um, one of the ways we're going to use this variable. So we'll say var image file from that event. We're going to get the first file that we choose. Target, sorry, dot files. Dot, yep, files. Zero, so the first one in the array, semicolon. Save that change. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to update, uh, or we're going to get the actual image element. So we can call this one var image element equals document. Oops, equals document dot get element by ID. The ID is image. We need a semicolon. So this is just a line of code that's going to save us time. It's getting this element so that we can then update that element's attribute. So now we can say for our image element, we're going to set the attribute src, that attribute, to be the URL of whichever image we picked. Create object URL image file. And then we need a semicolon. So what this function is saying is that we're going to take whatever image that we picked and get that um, image location. And then we're going to set the attribute of the SRC or the source of that of our image tag to be the image that we picked. So that it will be updated. All right. So that's our function. Now we actually need to call the function. We want to call this function whenever load image, this variable up here is changed. So whenever we've picked a new image, we can actually use the on change. Um, event to call that function. So we can say load image dot, so our variable load image, when this changes on change, we're going to call load input handler. We're going to say semicolon. So anytime that it's changed, we're going to call the load input handler. All right, save that. We're going to go ahead and come test this out. So refresh the page. And now we should be able to pick a different image and have it load into our app. So I went ahead and downloaded another image um, that I named Puppy2. And we can see that it updates the image in our photo editor. So that's part four. The last thing you want to do is you want to add at least two comments to your code. I recommend having a comment above the load image code so that you can describe that this code is used to load the image. And then you should pick one other part of your JavaScript to comment. Remember to comment uh, JavaScript, you just use two forward slashes. We could say something like this code is used to load the image into the app. Save that. All right. So have fun and don't forget to test your project and make sure that it works. All right.